Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about electronic sites and their future. In the past, I've made predictions about various things, including red dot sites on handguns. I'm going to make a prediction about the use of electronic sites on rifles like you see here. Now, right now, electronic sites are used by, you know, predator hunters and things like that, thermals. You'll have just actual digital sites like the Wraith, which we'll show you in today's video. Uh, we have a number of different electronic sites that are already out there, but I would say that we're still in that evolutionary process where none of them are really quite there yet. But with this Wraith 4K Mini I want to show you in today's video, we're getting much closer to electronic sites becoming the standard and you know, glass-based optics with etched reticles will eventually go the way of the dodo. And that's the prediction that I'm going to make in today's video. But before we get started with today's video, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. If you follow that link and join us on Patreon, you'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications and some other good stuff as well. So with that being said, let's get started with today's video. The Spectre DR is kind of a military classic site. A lot of people have seen them, some have used them, and I think most folks that actually get to play with them actually like them. It's mounted on top of an Expo Arms upper receiver from Primary Arms. Uh, this one has a 16 inch barrel on it, but if you check out some of the other offerings, they have an 11.5 inch barrel. They also have a 10.3 inch barrel. You can get them also with a dead air muzzle device on it. On this one, I've put an OSS muzzle device on it. This is a 16 inch uh, patrol setup. And with the OSS device, then on the bottom, I have a Palmetto State Armory A2 lower with a full fixed stock. And it works nicely with this particular site. What's really cool about this site is, first of all, it's really durable. It's made out of aluminum. And the fact that, again, I have that daylight visibility. I have a BDC built into the reticle and I can jump back and forth between one power and four power. The one power with the daylight visible illumination is really handy because it literally behaves like a red dot site in that particular mode. All right, so let's see, we got some Norma 55 green ball here. I'd like to thank our friends over at Norma for supplying the ammunition for your charge to the channel. Really windy today, guys. We're trying to block some of that wind with this uh, cardboard here. And let's pop Mr. Man size out there at 100 yards. Let's face it, guys, technology will advance. And there was just 10 years ago people saying red dot sights on handguns was the stupidest idea ever. It will never work. It's just dumb. Batteries are going to die. It's just blah, 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 blah. Every reason in the world people thought we're going to be using iron sights until, you know, Star Trek comes around. We will see technology advance. It's just how quickly will it advance and how will it advance? Here are some early commercial examples of electronic sites. You've seen them here before on the channel. This is an early version of a Wraith site. This has a CMOS sensor in it, much like a digital camera or the camera that you have on your phone. And then it has uh, the ability to record video and things like that. So it, it you know, it, it's a really cool setup, has a lot of features in it, probably more than necessary, but it can also see at night because when you're using a CMOS sensor, you can use an IR light source and then this becomes usable at night. Downside is it, it's a battery hog. Here's the battery compartment. It, um, you know, it's kind of heavy, kind of clunky, not ideal. The second generation site came along. It's a little bit more narrow in profile, definitely lighter weight, has a more simplified control system where you have a basic knob up here. Uh, you do have to focus these, but again, it's based on a CMOS sensor. The eye cups you can take off of them, just like Soviet optics. But both of those systems are, I don't know, just too big and clunky. That's where the new Wraith 4K comes into the picture. Now, if you take a look at it next to the Elcan Spectre DR, you're going to notice it's roughly the same size. It maintains the feature set of the earlier generations of the Wraith but it's in a much smaller package. This thing runs on 123A batteries, CR123A batteries, and it has the focus ring up here, runs on a CMOS sensor, 
All your controls are right here on this touchpad. Very easy to use. It can be used at night, again, with the IR light source. It has multiple different reticles you can choose from. It has a true mill reticle in it for using holds. It's a really, really useful sight, but it's small and lightweight. Let's do a little bit of shooting with this because I can record with this, and I want you to see what that looks like and hear what it, look, it sounds like because it also records audio. So the first time I got my hands on one of these new 4K minis at Copper, I was really intrigued. Now keep in mind, we're coming from a much larger site. Now I did do a video of these in the past and I really enjoy shooting with these electronic sites because I could record my shooting. And unfortunately, and you're gonna to have to check your state laws, unfortunately in Indiana, it is illegal for me to hunt deer with an electronic site like that. We're gonna to have to fight to get the DNR in our state to come around to modern times because digital sites don't really give you any advantage over a really nice piece of glass in terms of how lethal it is when you're deer hunting. Uh, but for whatever reason, our DNR is opposed to the use of digital optics. But other states, you can use them for hunting. And that's really cool because you, then you can record your hunt. For us, we can record shooting steel targets. This little guy, very small, lightweight, came with the caps already on it. And so uh, it does cover up the objective and ocular side lens. It does have a focus ring on it as the other previous generations did. This is so you can bring into sharp focus the target at whatever range you happen to be shooting at. It has a very simple keypad system up here to power it on to start recording and to move through the menu system. It's very intuitive. I didn't even have to read the manual. And then for batteries, this thing wor works with you know, either rechargeable or just 123A batteries. And so I keep a bunch of these on hand. What's also nice about this, and I just ordered the setup uh, to be able to do this, is that you can run an external power unit here. So this is a USB-C port. I've ordered a offset mount that's gonna mount a battery on the side of my pick rail, and I can run a, a power cable back here. And so I can run this site literally for hours and hours and hours and not have to worry about killing the CR123A batteries. They have, I think, about two and a half, three hour service life on fresh batteries. So if you're out hunting all night, just get a little tiny rechargeable battery, put it on a thorn tail, run a cable back to it. This actually comes with the cable. And there you go, you have energy all night long. All right, so let's go ahead and power it up. Unfortunately, I can't move through the menus while I'm recording, so all you'll be able to see is me actually taking shots. All right, so let's go ahead and power this up. I just have to touch that center button to wake it up. And it's already booted up and ready to go from a cold start. And now to record, I want to push right on the touchpad and I'll see the clock start counting over on the left-hand side. And now it's recording both audio and video. So here's the 100 yard man size target we were just shooting at with the Elcan. Now this is a mill reticle, so I can go, I can take it all the way out. We've got some pretty heavy wind. I can take it all the way out to 250. Kind of hard to hear. Hopefully you're hearing some of those impacts. Now, I can zoom in. Right now I'm at two power. There's three, four. Now this is a 4K sensor, but as we're zooming in, we're, we're cropping pixels, right? So it's gonna get more and more grainy as we zoom in. So then let's go ahead and use that. Uh... And I can show you the focus. You can see how it's out of focus. I bring it into sharp focus at 100. And that's it. Then I can kill the recording by touching the button on the top. And that's it. 
Now, you can also run this. It comes with an IR light, or you can pick up your own if you want to run an enforced and mount it up here on top with the pressure switch. You can do that. Uh, but with a, an IR light source, you can see about 300 yards with this thing, and it'd be great for pig hunting and things like that. Around here, all we can do is hunt coyotes, and we don't have a whole lot of those. Uh, but what I, again, really, really like about this new system is the size of it. So you're going to see me using these more in videos, and hopefully I can get on some hunts down in Texas and start to use these for recording as well. But I also use an awful lot of thermals. Thermals, again are the future. And there's this marriage between night vision and thermal that the military is working on that literally makes nighttime look like daytime. They, they're even getting colors and stuff. So the technology is evolving very, very quickly. And I'm really excited for that to trickle down to the, to the civilian market because again, these really are the future. I know a lot of you guys are gonna comment down below, you're stoned, you're crazy, it'll never happen. They're too fragile, the batteries suck. You're wrong, it will happen. It's just how long it takes for it to happen. The U.S. Concealed Carry Association, or USCCA, helps cover Americans like myself who carry a firearm daily for self-defense. Should I find myself in a self-defense shooting, I would reach out immediately to USCCA, and then they would have their expert legal staff help me out and make sure that I don't get in any trouble for a lawful self-defense encounter. They will help you up front by training you. They'll help you during and after a self-defense shooting, so it's really important to have that peace of mind, at least for myself. If you want to learn more about USCCA and how you can protect yourself from any type of criminal charges or something that might arise from a self-defense shooting, click the link in the video description below. Keep in mind, guys, there was a time when red dot sights were big, unwieldy things. There was a time when lasers were big, unwieldy things. Go watch the original Terminator movie, for example, and the laser he had on the 45 long slide. As technology advances, <clears throat> things get smaller, battery life gets extended. Red dot sights like the one you see here now can last up to 50,000 hours. That's not measuring battery life in days or weeks or months. That's measuring battery life in years. So a aim point, for example, can literally run for five or six years constantly on. And so that technology has evolved. And that same evolution is going to take place for fully digital optics, simply because they have so much more to offer. The sensors in these things can see more than our naked human eyes can see. And anything that can increase our ability to see better at night, to see better at range, to do anything, we're going to want to invest in because it will make hit probability better, both in the civilian world and you will see it in the military world. As a matter of fact, the M157 optic for the new M5 service rifle incorporates some electronic services in it. It can talk back and forth between other sites. It has an electronic built-in BDC, but it still has an etched glass reticle should the electronics fail. Again, we're just not quite there yet, but it will happen. Another thing that I wanted to point out that this thing has a number of different settings that you can choose from. It's not just kind of a one and done thing. You can pick multiple different reticles and you have nine different colors. You can make those reticles. And so it's, it's, uh, it's really configurable. Right now I have it set up with a Chevron that's red and I'm gonna do some shooting with it now. Again, I wish I could record as I'm moving through the, the menu features. Sadly, I can't, it doesn't have that functionality. All right, let's go ahead and set it up for recording. And then I'm going to zoom in. And zoom back one. It's a little bit pixelated now. Focus, get that perfect. And then that's a 150 yard target. Ah, didn't lock open. This magazine always gives me fits. An old military magazine. But, I can stop the recording. It's just so darn cool. I really look forward to the time when, hopefully, in my state of Indiana, I'll be able to use these types of devices to record my own hunts so that, you know, it can be handed down and my kids can watch them 20 years from now.
All right, guys, if you have any questions about these types of optics, just ask those questions in the video comments down below. I try to read through those comments for the first day or so after a video goes live. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, again, please check out Patreon. There is a link in the video description below. Right here on YouTube, got that little join button under the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and help support us in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.